Hello everyone and welcome once again to Taekwondo Step by Step. I'm Andrew. Tell me, have you ever been in love? I mean truly in love. There was once a man who was so in love with a woman that he wrote her letters every day for several years. In fact, in one day he actually wrote her 20 letters. Then another man, to show his love for a woman, crawled on his knees for 15 kilometers. And then another man was so in love with a woman that he wrote her name all over the city in fact in 80 different places. The police even caught him and locked him up, but he still kept on doing it. Ha! That's a man for you. Anyway, if you're really in love, then you'll express this kind of love to the people that you're in love with. And we also need to love ourselves, take care of ourselves, make sure we're healthy and strong and all of these things. So let's start out this day by loving ourselves with some exercise. Let's have a look now at Master Lee's demonstration of Tegek Paltjang, the eighth pattern. Ooh. Master Lee, welcome back. Hi everyone, I'm Lee Gyu-hyun. Master Lee, yesterday I was so excited about everyone making it to the 8th pattern that I forgot to ask you to tell us what the meaning of Teg Paltang, the 8th pattern is. That's a good question, Andrew. Well, the 8th pattern stands for Kwon, one of the 8 divination signs. And Kwon, of course, represents Yen, or the Earth. It also means roots or stability, and then again, it can also mean a beginning or the end. I hope every one of you keeps this basic philosophy in mind and practice Taekwondo hard. Well, we have the roots, the stability, the beginning, and the end. Very important things to remember. Let's think about that now as we go through and follow Master Lee as he teaches us. Now it's time for Pumse practice or going through the forms in a certain pattern. First, I'll show you the previous set of forms we learned, and then the new ones. All right, it's up to here that we'll be practicing for today. But to review what we learned last time, we left off here, the Momtong Paro Jirugi. Now the opponent is likely to back off to avoid the attack. So the logic for the next move is to make a follow-up attack. One application would be to kick from the standing position while blocking the possible counterattacks with your hand. But in the formal sequence, we'll be doing a Tubal Dangsang Apchagi, like this, where you kick the body and then the face of the opponent. Now, as you set your foot down, the opponent is likely to capitalize on the moment and attack with either his hands or feet. In response, you are supposed to make a block like this, the wen apkubi montongmaki. Kicking gets just a little bit tricky sometimes, doesn't it? But in the same way, it's very effective and your legs are very powerful when compared to your arms when you're attacking or defending yourself. So remember that and put plenty of effort into it, okay? Watch carefully, everyone. You all recognize this stance, right? The sparring stance. Well, we'll be doing the Kodro Momtong Pakamaki to block his punch like this. Now, in the previous session, we attack with a punch after the block. 
But this time, let's say the opponent avoided that by stepping back. It's a good chance to do the kicking maneuver that we just learned. The key point is you can use the initial kick as a fainting motion or a kick targeting the opponent's body. As you just saw, the sequence could work against you. But once again, you can prevent getting hit by doing the wen apkubi montongmaki. You know what time of day it is. The time when we give you the opportunity to go back and make sure everything's perfect. It's now time for today's point. Okay, it's now time for free sparring. Like yesterday, we'll learn how you can effectively spar with someone who is very quick and agile with his kicks. Watch carefully. As for the starting stance, it doesn't matter if you're standing in an uphum or a mapum. In a split second, the opponent is able to kick you like this. But it would have been too late if you didn't take action. The key is to react immediately when he moves his feet to come in. You do a hurigi like this. Once more now, in actual speed. Watch. If you're someone that's worried about taking care of yourself, about being safe, then this is for you. Taekwondo, real life. We're back on the streets again, back to teach you more street protection. Let's grab someone else right now. Excuse me, would you like to learn some self-defense? Yes, please. Okay, well, what would you do if somebody grabbed you from behind like this? That really? Oh, you don't know? Okay, well, let's grab Master Lee and he'll teach us. Master Lee. Hey. When an assailant grabs your shoulder like this, you put your left hand on his, like this. And pulling your right foot back, you spin around like this to apply pressure on his elbow. You shouldn't let go of your hands, or else he would break away. Okay, you think you can do it? Yes. Well, let's have a practice right now in Taekwondo, real life! Pretty good to me. Master Lee, what do you think? Yes, she did this move perfectly. Oh, oh, fantastic. And you guys can be just as good. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow, okay? See you until then. Bye bye. Remember, we were talking in the beginning about loving people and being loved. Well, if you live with someone, make sure you tell them today that you love them and show them that. That's right. Even though some things are considered granted in life, they won't mean much if you keep them to yourself. So you need to express your feelings to convey the message. Exactly. Well, Master Lee, thank you so much for teaching us today. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Okay.